What's going on guys, John Elder here from Konami.com and in this video, we're going to continue building out our Geography Flashcard app with Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to continue building out our Geography Flashcard app. We're going to add the images and randomize it and do all that fun stuff. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, so when we left off in the last video, which if you didn't see, check the playlist in the uh, comment section below, uh, we just had a blank sort of thing, and when we clicked on... Uh, one of the things it said capitals when we clicked on states it just said states in this video i want to build out this functionality to where we show a random flashcard and we can sort of toggle through different ones and get a random one each time and uh, go from there in the next video we'll work on you know the form that we put the answer in and the logic and stuff behind it in this video i just want to kind of look at adding these images so First things first, let me just pull up a Windows Explorer here. And what I did is I just went online and found some random images for states. It doesn't matter at all what you use. And I only pulled out 10 of them because it took me a little while to find them and it was a hassle. So I just did 10 instead of all 50. Uh, obviously, if you wanted to make this into a real app, you would do all 50. I'll leave that to you if you want to. But you'll see the thing to note here is how I name them. I named them the name of the state. So California is California.png. Florida is Florida.png. I didn't use any capital letters. It's all lowercase. And that's kind of important. Not really important. Just it will be important just based on how I'm going to build out this app. You could use capital letters if you want, but then you'd have to tweak your code later on to account for that. And uh, maybe we'll talk about that later. But uh, that's just how I did it. You know, you can do it any of a zillion ways. Now I saved these files in our GUI directory. I created a new directory inside of that directory called states, right? So uh, I just put them all in there. So uh, we'll look at this a little bit more later. For now, let's look at our code. And we just have from the last video, very basic code here. We've got a couple of menu buttons at the top of the screen, the states and state capitals. When you click either one, it pulls up states function or the state capitals function which are just these two functions right here. So the states one, all it does is show a frame. The frame has a label on it that says states, and then it hides all other frames and destroys the children in previous frames. So very basic functionality, nothing much going on here. Now in this video, we wanna to start to build out the image part of this thing. So I'm just gonna comment out this thing. We don't really need that anymore. So let's create a list of state names, first of all. And we can call this anything we want. I'm gonna call it our states and set that equal to a Python list. And inside of this, I'm just gonna type in all of our states. So California, we only have 10 of them, so this won't take but a second. And now I'm gonna use the same names and the same spelling convention that I saved the files as, and this is important. So if you saved your file as capital California, like that, uh, you would do that. Now we could go California.png, that'll make something lighter on a little bit harder. So I'm just gonna put the name itself. So California, let's go Florida. Let's see, I also had, I think, Illinois and Kentucky. And if you're not familiar with Python lists, a Python list is just, I'm just gonna paste this in, I don't wanna copy all of these. So a Python list is just a list of things separated by commas. In our case, these are strings, it's text, it's not like numbers or anything, so we put wrap them in quotation marks. They could be single quotes or they could be double quotes, like, uh, let's see, like this, right? So single quotes or double quotes, doesn't matter whatsoever. So, okay, so we've got our list of states. Now, if you had all 50 states, you would put all 50, but uh, I don't have all 50, I only have 10, so I'm just gonna do 10. Now, we also want to create a random number. So at the top here, we need to import the Python random module or whatever. So let's go from uh, random, import rand int. 
And rand int allows us to create random integers. And an integer is a whole number, so 8, 27, 42, not a decimal or a float like 1895, $18.95 or 14.3. That's a float. We want ints, we want whole numbers. So uh, we will import rand int. And let's come back down here to here and let's let's generate a random number because we want our app to randomly pick a state. So we have to randomly pick a number and that number will be the index number of one of these things. So remember Python lists are indexed items and indexed items start with zero. So as California is the zeroth item in this list. Florida is the first item. Illinois is the second item, third, fourth, etc., all the way down to the end. So just sort of keep that in mind. So, okay, let's create a random number and let's call this, I don't know, rando, <laughs> just any random number. And we want this to be a rand int. And this is a function. Now, what kind of random number? Well, we want it to be between zero and something. What do we want it to be between? Well, the number of items in our list. So we have 10 items. So that means there are nine items in our list. You know, there's 10 actual things, but that means there's nine items, list items. Why? Because it starts at zero. So zero, one, two, three, four, let's see, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So Vermont is the ninth item in our list, right? Makes sense. Even though there's 10 items, Vermont is the ninth item. Well, we could just put random between zero and nine, and that's fine. That will work but that's not as good, that's not as dynamic. We may not know how many items are in our list if you're creating this list dynamically somehow. You know, I have 10, you might want 50. You know, why leave it to chance and guess? We can just programmatically do this by calling the len function. And this will give us the length of our, our states list. So we can just pass in our states into the len function. And this will say, okay, there are 10 things in this list. Well, we don't want a random number between zero and 10. We want a random number between zero and nine. Even though there are 10 items in our list, the last one is nine, as I just showed you. So what we need to do is go len our states minus one. So this will return nine, right? If we had 50 items in our list, it would return 49. And the last item would be the 49th item because it starts at zero. Okay, hopefully you understand that. This is nothing new. We've talked about random numbers in the past. And uh, so that's cool. So now we need to, let's create our state images. So remember at the beginning of this series, I imported pill and then image TK and image. Now, if you haven't pip installed pillow, do that, go back to your terminal and pip install Pillow, capital P, right? That will then allow us, I've already done it, so I'm not gonna do it again, but that will allow us to, from pill, I know it's different, pill is not the same as pillow, but it is, <laughs> import image TK and image. So this allows us to do image stuff with Kinter. We've talked about images in the past. So I'm just gonna create a variable called uh, state uh, underscore image. And I'm gonna make this global because you never know with uh, Kinter and images, what needs to be global or not. So I just always make images global. And let's go state image equals, now this is gonna be an image TK, capital T, capital T lowercase K, and that's dot photo image. And that's a function, the P is capital and the I is capital and photo image. And then we just need to now image dot open what we want to open. now. Normally we would go, we save these in um, the, what was the name of that directory again? In the states directory, right? So we would go something like states slash California dot PNG, right? That's how we would normally do this, but we want to randomize this. We don't want to just show the states dot PMG. So we'll do that in just a second. Just a second. I'm going to leave it like this for now, just so that we can make sure this is working correctly. So, okay, we've, defined our image, now we need to put it up on the screen. So let's go show underscore state, and it's just a variable name, and it's gonna be a label. 
And we want to put this in our state frame, which is the name of the frame that we've designated. And we want the image to equal our state underscore image, right? Now we can show underscore state dot pack. And let's give this a pad y of, I don't know, 15 or so. Okay, so this will throw up the image of California on the screen, hopefully. So let's save this and run this just to make sure we don't have any errors at this point. Okay, so geography states, and we do have an error. What did I do? State image is not defined. So, oh, I called it state IMG. So, hmm. Let's change this image. Okay, so change this to state image, and then this will be state image. Okay, that makes more sense. Now we also need to change this global to state image. Okay, so save this, this should work now. Let's go ahead and run this and see. Geography states, boom, California. All right, so that works. All right, so let's clear the screen. But like I said, we don't want to just show California, we want to show a random one every time, right? So up here in our random thing, let's create another variable and I'm just going to call it state. And I'm going to set that equal to state slash, right? That's this thing. Basically, what we want to do is we want to recreate this. And then instead of passing in that we will pass in this state variable. So we want state, and then we want to concatenate. What do we want to concatenate? Well, a random number, rando, but this will just give us a random number. So two, seven, eight. We want to then print out one of these. You know, if we if our random number is two, for instance, that's Illinois. We don't want to print out two, we want to print out the word Illinois. So to do that, we just call our states and then pass in rando in square brackets. So now if two is called California zero, one, two, this will print out Illinois, right? So then we also want to concatenate dot PNG, right? So now this will equal basically this, right? So instead of putting this in here, let's just put in state, right? So no quotation marks in here, just the variable name. Okay, so let's save this and run and see if that worked. Hopefully, we will get some new state. Uh oh, something happened. No such file or directory state nevada.png. Ah, I called this states, not state. All the typos this morning. It's Wednesday, it's not even Monday. So, okay, uh, where are we at here? States, there we go, right? The name of the directory, our state, and then .png. All right, so that should work, right? Hopefully. <laughs> I haven't had much coffee today, only one cup. Need more coffee. As you can tell, boom, Texas. All right, so uh, that seems to work. Let's run it again. And hopefully we get a different one besides Texas. Boom, New York, cool. Okay, so that's working. Now let's create a little button that will just toggle through these for fun. I don't know if this will make it to the final thing or not, the final program, but for now, just to play with it, let's do that. So let's come to our states function again, and let's just uh, create button to randomize images, uh, state images, there we go. And let's put some space in here. We're not animals. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's go rando underscore button. And that's a button. And we wanna put it in our state underscore frame. And we want the text to equal, um, I don't know, next state. And we want the command to equal what? Well, I think we could just run this whole frame again. So we could just call states right? Because then this whole function will run again, it will hide itself, it will destroy all the widgets that were in there. And then it will go through this whole process again, create a new random number, slap it together, put it up on the screen, and that should work, right? So I think that'll work. So let's go rando 
underscore button dot pack. And let's give this a pad Y of 10 or so, just to kind of push it down. Let's give ourselves some space there. Okay, so let's save this and run it. And hopefully that will do the trick. Zoom, so geography, states, Nets, Kentucky, Nebraska, Illinois, Texas, Nevada, woo uh, Oregon, California, and we just keep uh, toggling around. Every time we click the button, we get a new state. All right, so later on, obviously, we don't really need this next state button unless we want to just have a, you know, like a pass button. Like, I don't know the answer to that one, pass, right? We could do that. Um, so maybe we'll leave that in there. Otherwise, what we want to happen is we want somebody to enter in Oregon, for instance, and then click the button to see if they're right or not. And then when that happens, it will flash up a new state automatically afterwards. So we don't have to like explicitly keep clicking the next state button. It should just work automatically. But uh, we'll work on that in the next video or so. So, so okay, coming right along in the next video, like I said, we will start to build out the functionality that allows us to answer these flashcards and you know put in an answer and see if it's correct or not. And that'll be in the next video. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, which really helps the channel out. And I really appreciate and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube one to get $30 off membership. Say so pages $49 to access all my courses, over 40 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 90,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.